Hey everyone, we're in Chiang Mai this week and excited to do more exploring. But before that, we just got up, so we're going to go grab breakfast at the complimentary breakfast buffet at our hotel. This is honestly the biggest perk of staying here. This breakfast bumps up Nanaran Hotel from like a three stars to a solid four stars. It's seriously really good. They have Thai food and egg station that you saw earlier. They also make fresh waffles and pancakes for you. There's dim sum, porridge, fruit, pastries, you name it. They even have an entire honeycomb you can scrape a uh, fresh honey from. This whole experience makes getting up early a little more delightful. Today, me and Chesley uh, rented a chauffeur to take us to Buatong Waterfall and Chetsi Fountain National Park. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but uh, it's about an hour and 20 minutes outside of Chiang Mai proper. And you're not gonna really get a grab. I mean, you can probably get a grab to get there, but then coming back, uh, you might not get you know a taxi or a way back. So that's why we recommend hiring a dedicated chauffeur driver for the day. And we booked ours through our hotel and it cost about, uh, it cost 2,200 baht, which is around $60, which is not bad. They'll stick with you for the whole day for up to eight hours. They'll drive you all around the national parks or wherever you wanna go. Um, so I recommend doing that if you plan to uh, you know, explore some of the nature and um, national parks around Chiang Mai. We're pretty lucky because it's kind of overcast today. The weather is really nice. It's not too hot. It's not too sunny. Um, it's very mild tempered weather today, so it's great for hiking. We're first going to go check out a short hike that's next to the Buadong waterfall to see Nampu Chetsi, which literally means seven colors fountain. Okay, now let's go check out Puadong Waterfall, which is also known as the Sticky Waterfalls. And it's called Sticky Waterfalls because of the unique ability to climb up the waterfalls here, which I'll show you in just a bit. This is a very popular tourist destination. First, we're going to go down these stairs. You have to go, obviously, all the way to the bottom of the waterfall in order to climb up it. So now we're at the bottom of the waterfall and at the start of the trail or the climb. I'm rinsing my hands real quick here. And here's an incredible view of the waterfall. It's so cool. There we go. Sticky waterfall. Stop. Use your hand. You got it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Go for it. You actually don't really need the rope, but I'm risk averse. And here's a cool little third person shot that our amazing tour guide and driver helped us take. Again, I'll leave her contact information in the description if you want to book her. She's great. She'll help you take pictures, videos, etc. It's kind of crazy how we're climbing this waterfall. It's so fun. It's not slippery at all. It's actually pretty easy. Um, so I recommend you try it, even if you're a little bit scared of heights. It's relatively safe. The waterfall rocks are made of a limestone mineral deposit that is incredibly grippy. So it feels and looks like a hardened sponge and it isn't slippery at all. Um, and also no algae or slime grows on the rocks, which is why it looks so clean and like one solid color. Um, and there are ropes installed on a waterfall to help visitors climb up. So 
everything's like really well maintained. Um, there are four tiers of waterfalls that you can climb up, but I would say it's a pretty quick, pretty quick climb. You could do it within 20 minutes if it's not busy and there aren't a lot of people. Um, and you can climb up as many times as you want. We are at the Wat Ban Dan Temple, which is in the middle of the mountains and it is so beautiful here. This temple is one of the largest temple complexes in Chiang Mai province. It includes an ordination hall, a meditation hall, the monks living quarters, a drum hall, and several other buildings. It has been newly renovated, so everything here feels new and looks new, but the temple is built in the traditional Lana architectural style, which you can see in the three-tiered blue blue tiled roofs here. It's, it's beautiful. You have to come see it in person. And many of the temple's buildings are guarded by these large mythical naga serpents on each side of the stairs. They kind of look like dragons. And all over the temple grounds are large white lion figures called Singha, um, and they act as guardians. The temple complex also holds 12 chetis or pagodas, and each one represents one of the zodiac animals. It's definitely not as busy at this temple as some of the other ones in Chiang Mai city proper because it's hard to get out here unless you have a, like a tour guide or a dedicated driver to take you out here. So it's pretty nice. You get the whole temple almost to yourself. I did end up having to buy a skirt because we weren't planning on coming to a temple but our driver recommended stopping by here since we were in the area anyways. I think this is my favorite temple out of all those I've visited so far in Thailand. It's serene and peaceful here in the mountains and I love the vibrant colors of the buildings and the sculptures. Hi, now we're at Land of Angels Waterfalls Park which is a artificial waterfall created by man but it is regarded as being the most beautiful in thailand is what it says in the ticket that you get when you come in here and it's really beautiful it's like a beautiful garden a lot of flowers a lot of trees a lot of fake mist i love how they have these fake mist machines on the side of trees to add some atmosphere and some moisture into the air to make it cooler. Oh, the mist feels so good, especially when it's so hot now. It is properly midday, 1.20 p.m. and the sun is out now and it is properly hot. I think this is the main attraction here. This is the man-made waterfall they're talking about. A lot of great photo ops around here.
it's actually quite small here. There's only one central attraction, which is this little island behind me, which has the waterfall, a uh, fake artificial mountain. And beyond that, there's nothing really else to see here. So I would say you probably spend maybe 20 to 30 minutes here taking photos. Um, there's also a cafe and restaurant and there's a bathroom here, but really nothing else to do. So don't plan on staying here too long. Oh, what a beautiful elephant ear or alocasia plant. They grow so big here in the tropical areas. I have one of these myself uh, at home, but it's tiny in comparison. And now we're gonna get some food, some lunch here at the cafe. Jurassic era. And here I perform my magic sorcery. and I are going to get our hair done at New York, New York Hair Studio. My aunt's gonna get a haircut and then a hair treatment for her dyed hair. I'm not getting haircut, but I am getting a botanical repair hair treatment just to make my hair a little smoother. You also get a complimentary quick massage for every treatment. And this is my aunt getting a massage. The final look, she trimmed her bang and got a trim on the ends too. So let's take a look at the back. Looks, and she got a bond repair treatment. So her hair is stronger, so she dyes it a lot. And now we're at a night market, hoping to grab some quick dinner. There are a couple of street food vendors here that we're going to go check out. Yes, we got some pork ribs and some pork belly, 100 grams each, and it was 200 baht total. The pork belly tastes really sweet, kind of caramelized. It almost tastes like cha siu, which is Chinese roast pork. And if you dip it in the chili sauce, ooh, it gives it a nice kick. Very good. The sauce is so good. I decided that for my main, I am going to get number seven braised beef noodles from this stall.
I added some chili flakes and powder on top. I like my food with a kick. These look like pho noodles. Oh, it smells so good. This is like the third time my aunt got durian in Thailand. She loves this stuff and so does my uncle. It's about 7 p.m. and this food hall got really crowded. When we arrived around 6.30, there weren't, there were hardly any people here. And for dessert tonight, we are getting gelato. It's 59 baht for one scoop. And I'm getting the Oreo flavor. Chesley is getting the Korean melon. Here we are getting breakfast at Khao Soi Kun Yai, which is supposedly one of the best Khao Soi places in Chiang Mai, according to Chris Parker, a YouTuber that I like to follow. This place is closed for two weeks two three weeks for vacation oh my god i'm so disappointed i came all the way here just to eat at this place we have been so unlucky this whole trip with places we want to go to they're like every place that we want to go to is pretty much closed or we arrive on an off day or they're closed on a wednesday or a random monday or a random sunday it's just uh, frustrating so our plan C for tomorrow, today's breakfast is Fern Forest Cafe because our first two places didn't pan out. The Khao Soi, Kun Ya, and then the Versailles, the Flores Cafe also was not open. So here we are instead. They have some pretty fancy drinks here and some pretty amazing looking milkshakes. I think I like an orange dirty espresso orange zest milk. I don't want anything too sweet. I was looking at the Twilight Eclipse, but I don't really know how I feel about it. passion fruit. Um, and then Into the Earth also sounds really good. So does Sandy. Cheese. First came out our pineapple fried rice. Looks like there's some Chinese sausage and raisins in there. Very interesting take. And some pork floss on top. My aunt and Chesley both got the sweet berry smoothie and it looks so stunning and aesthetic. It tastes good. It tastes like a yogurt parfait slash acai bowl. We got uh, a chicken curry with roti as a appetizer to share. This roti curry doesn't taste that good. The curry is pretty watered down and diluted and flavored. My aunt and uncle are sharing the club sandwich with fries and it looks so good. It's actually really big.
and then my chicken cow soy came. It comes with a chicken drumstick. Ooh. And a lot of crispy noodles on top. That looks delicious. And then my dirty orange coffee came. Or is it called orange dirty? The koi fish here are huge. Now at Central Festival Mall, which is the biggest mall in Chiang Mai, and we're just gonna walk around, shop around, maybe buy some souvenirs. It's definitely not as impressive as the mega malls in Bangkok, but it's so nice place to get some AC. We ended up just shopping here for like an hour or two. Um, there's not much special. A lot of Western brands, some local Thai brands. We ended up just getting some baby clothes and now we're gonna go back to the hotel to rest. Aunt and I just got our nails done at this salon called Jew's Nail and she got pink holographic gel nails with a sparkle to it because she didn't like the color that she got in Bangkok, which is a little too purple. And then I got a classic French manicure. Just admiring my fingernails again. I think they did a pretty decent job. We were feeling pretty tired and lazy tonight. We didn't want to go out to eat, so we ordered a bunch of takeout from Grab. Um, delivery service and delivery was super cheap I think it was less than a dollar to have things delivered but we ordered quite a lot of food to try a lot of cow soys with different proteins this is a blood sausage uh, sticky rice looks like onion rings that's a tong yum with shrimp for Chesley and then we ordered uh, two different types of veggie stir fries and it's interesting because in Thailand, everything is in plastic bags, including the soup and curry. So, um, And then four different cow soys, two for my aunt and uncle, and then we're going to be sharing the rest of the stuff too. It's not just for me and Chesley. Um, and because everything is in plastic bags, we went out and bought bowls and chopsticks because at the other hotel we were staying at in Bangkok, we didn't have any bowls or chopsticks to eat from is my braised beef cow soy all put together it looks so good we just landed in bangkok from chiang mai it's about 3 p.m right now and this is our last night in Th thailand we're flying out back to the united states tomorrow morning very early so we're at the hyatt place uh, in bangkok for one night this is our room, bathroom, and has a shower, no bathtub this time. Big vanity mirror, which is nice. Very modern, clean aesthetic type of place, which I like. It's very comfortable. There's sofa, and then our bed, and a TV, and a little desk area. Very standard. And we have this view, which is <laughs> not that impressive. Uh, a lot of concrete buildings. Well, you get the cityscape and the skyline, I suppose. Yeah, this is gonna be home for a night. grocery store and at an quartier and we're getting a bunch of snacks and souvenirs for our friends and a lot of Thai tea too. 
I hope that we can fit everything in our luggage. We are kind of ridiculous. I'm really worried now that things are not gonna fit in our luggage. For our last big shebang before we leave Bangkok, we're gonna have dinner at the Goji uh, Buffet, seafood Japanese buffet. It's at the Marriott Marquis, and that's where we're headed. It's called Goji Kitchen and Bar. And it's a luxury seafood buffet. I'm so excited because I love sushi. This is a fancy Marriott. Look at this ginormous lobby. Okay, now let's go check out what they have. So they have a hot and sour seafood soup bar with fish, squid, and shrimp. And then right next to it is a noodle soup bar with meatballs, thinly sliced meats, and tons of toppings to choose from. But of course, I need to stop by the meat station first to get some ribeye, some wagyu, some lamb. And then the pan-seared Hokkaido scallops caught my eye, so I had to try that as well. I don't know what sauces go with what, so I'm just crossing my fingers here and trying a little bit of everything. They also have Indian food. It's a really good variety of ethnic food. They had a Thai salad bar some dim sum they also had another soup station with pre-made soups like this fish maw soup and egg drop soup with crab and then they had this amazing spread of charcuterie offerings so you could build your own board with cheeses and fruits as well but what I was most excited for was the oysters and sushi. And the fact that they had several kinds of raw oysters to choose from gave me very high hopes and expectations. Sadly, the sushi bar was kind of disappointing. Just a very small selection. The rolls looked uninspiring. They did have sashimi though, so I'll give them a point for that. They also had things like mussels, uh, shrimp, and crab. They tried some of their prime rib, their wagyu beef, um, their braised beef, and then a pork rib. Scallops are absolutely divine. Perfectly seared. Mm. Got a crab now. See how it tastes. Initial impressions, the beef and the proteins are pretty good. They make it really well, perfectly cooked, medium rare. I'm pretty disappointed by the seafood so far. I've had, uh, I've tried each of their oysters. They're super salty. Um, I've had their sushi. The sushi nigiris are not great. Like, I don't know, something with the rice. It's just really, it's not cooked not made well. Um, the sashimi is fine because how can you mess up sashimi, right? The sushi is just very like convenience store sushi to me. It doesn't look premium or high grade. It's at a point to get tom yum at every place we've been to in Thailand so far and you try this one at the buffet. What's your reaction? There's no flavor. It's probably the worst tom yum I've ever had. It's so whack. <laughs> No flavor. Excited because they have musket, uh, muscat, is that how you pronounce it? Muscat grapes here, which are these giant grapes that are super expensive when you buy them from the grocery store. <gasps> well, how does it taste? You put a knot, that's mine. 
Wait, is it incredible? No, it just tastes like really. a normal grape. No. Um, Not as crisp. I'm disappointed. It's a moment of truth. <laughs> it just tastes like a normal grape. It is pretty soggy or like squishy. I got the penne carbonara to try. Mm. The carbonara is actually pretty good. It doesn't taste like carbonara, that tastes like an Alfredo sauce. So it's not authentic, but it tastes, it's tasty. We had a braised beef risotto that I had to try. It looks really good. corrected this sucks <laughs> the risotto grains are undercooked let me try to be the braised beef is really good it's tender and the right amount of fat and lean meat it's really good the dessert the final boss they have a whole mango sticky rice station here. It's so cute. And they have a lot of cakes and mousses. Oh, individual cakes, tiramisu. One, hot cream, creme brulee. Ah, so much fruit. Ice cream, of course. Ooh. And my favorite bread pudding. I got the double chocolate cake, which looks super rich and thick the way I like it. And then a, a cheesecake. And then the bread pudding, a it's like a pandan uh, pancake and then yeah I think that's it and then Chesley got a cream puff a little fruit tart and the mango sticky rice Not bad. I like this one he says he likes this one on an uncle's dessert, they're having fruit, <laughs> being healthy. They're smart. The chocolate cake was really good. It's dark chocolate, so it's not too sweet. But the cheesecake was a disappointment. It doesn't really taste like cheesecake. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of flavorless. Um, it is crumbly. I would give the chocolate cake a 7 out of 10 and the cheesecake like a 3 out of 10. Probably would not get that again. <laughs> Expected. <laughs> we are having a lot of trouble fitting all our snacks and souvenirs and chips into our suitcases. Everything's already pretty much filled up and full. Friends, if you're watching this, you're welcome. We went through this trouble just to bring you back snacks and souvenirs.